Hello, my name is Professor Andrew Weeks and I'm a consultant obstetrician at Liverpool Women's Hospital in the UK. I want to tell you about a completely new treatment for postpartum haemorrhage that could revolutionise the way we treat women with bleeding after childbirth. Why do we need a new treatment? Well, I think there are three main reasons. First, PPH rates are escalating, and this is partly due to the increasing use of oxytocin during labour. This occupies the oxytocin receptors and makes PPH treatment with oxytocin less effective. So it would be very helpful to have a non-oxytocin based option. Secondly, most current therapies do not take effect immediately. They're given, and you wait to see whether the blood flow stops. And if it doesn't, after some minutes, then you try again. By the time you finally go to theatre, the woman has lost considerable amounts of blood. Embrace UK have called for new therapies that turn off the tap of PPH, preventing the slide into hemodynamic instability and clotting disorders that makes treatment so difficult down the line. Thirdly, the mainstay of PPH therapy is currently injectable uterotonics, and they need refrigeration and skilled health workers to give them. This leaves a huge number of women worldwide without access to an effective PPH treatment. No wonder PPH is the single biggest killer of mothers worldwide, causing a maternal death every 10 minutes. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a treatment that could solve all these problems? Well, it may surprise you to hear that we do have that treatment already. It's called bimanual compression. It's highly effective when done properly, and yet we rarely use it, and we can all understand why. It's because the insertion of a fist into the birth canal is very uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for the woman, and it's uncomfortable for the doctor or midwife doing it. And it has overtones of sexual violence, so it's no surprise that we only use it in extreme situations. But what if we could find a way of doing bimanual compression that wasn't so invasive? Imagine having a treatment that was as effective, but no more invasive than a speculum examination. We think that we have achieved that, with the PPH butterfly. So what is it? Essentially, it's a device that inserts a temporary transverse platform high in the vagina beneath the cervix. The uterus can then be squeezed against it with just a single hand on the abdomen. The PPH butterfly device is a single piece of plastic with a central platform and two arms either side. The platform is designed to be the same size as the end of a fist when opened up. But when folded for insertion, the platform is only the width of three fingers, and no wider. This allows the device to be lubricated and slipped into the genital tract atraumatically. Remember, of course, that immediately after childbirth, the genital tract is very lax, having just been distended by the fetal head, and so it's easy to insert. And yet, once inside, the arms are brought together, which opens up the platform, providing a large, smooth, rounded surface against which the uterus can be compressed with a hand on the abdomen. The holes in the platform allow blood to pass through it when the compression is released. This is vital for assessing whether the bleeding has stopped and for preventing the build-up of blood behind the platform. The handles are deliberately bulky to prevent over-insertion. When inserted, the distance from the platform to the handle is the length of a medium Cusco speculum. The handles also have finger holes in them, allowing two different ways of holding the device. It can be held as if doing traditional bimanual compression, or Four fingers are placed in the lower holes and the device is held in place against the bed. This allows the doctor or midwife to use their body weight to press on the uterus whilst holding the device in place. This position can be held for a long time without tiring. So how would the PPH butterfly change our management? 
Well, if the butterfly was used as soon as the bleeding started, then the PPH tap could be turned off at the very start. This gives time for the drugs to take effect, as well as for the natural involution of the uterus. And critically, it means that the woman is safe whilst we're finding and treating the underlying cause of the bleeding. The PPH butterfly also diagnoses the source of the bleeding. If the bleeding continues despite effective uterine compression, then the likely source is a laceration and the process of identifying and suturing the bleeding vessel can start immediately. If the bleeding stops, however, then the bleeding must have been uterine in origin and the compression of the uterus should be continued, releasing it every so often to see if the bleeding has stopped. If it has, then the device is removed. If not, the compression is restarted and further oxytocics given. In this way, if eventually the woman needs to be taken to theatre, she'll have lost very little extra blood because the ongoing use of the device has kept the tap turned off. And so coagulation disorders from massive PPH should never happen. The device is undergoing clinical testing right now in Liverpool. If it's effective, then it could be a major advance in the management of postpartum haemorrhage. It'll provide a way of turning off the tap of PPH at the same time as diagnosing its source. Add to that that it could be reusable, it doesn't need refrigeration, and we have a potentially groundbreaking advance for women's health globally. Thank you for watching.